Okay, check. All right. Are we both here now? Yes, we should. Okay. I invited Nick, but, you know, we'll see. <laughs> Nick's always running late. My man, Nick. <laughs> All right. All right. What round is this? This is going to be 16. And Jensen is up 90 points on Logan, who's not even racing today. Yeah. So, damn, I don't know how to start a live stream on fucking PlayStation. Uh, do you have an account set up? Or are you going to stream it to like Twitch or YouTube? Oh, here we go. Broadcast. Yeah. There we go. Oh, 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 oh. And then if you want to, you have to choose to include party audio too, if that's what you want. Well, yeah, that would mean you. Yeah, and you, because you're in a party. Uh, round 16. God, it's been almost a year since I've done this. Yeah, as we get ready, the chat is already... Popping off for the return of Fox. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not trying to steal any of your thunder. No, bro. I'm. I'm always happy to be the the boring. The boring like workman in the booth. Let someone else add the spice. The race is on. What are you going on about? I thought you said that the race. Yeah, the one I'm getting ready to do. <laughs> this one. What did you think I was talking about? Thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, baby. All right. All right, so you're okay being the boring guy? Of course. <laughs> I think you should. I think you should do race start, though. I would love to have the first lap. I think people would love you to have race start and first lap. Uh, All right, get ready to go live. You're currently in a party. Do you want to include its audio in your broadcast? Yes, I do. Are you ready? Yeah, we're live on the SRL uh, stream oh, already. Oh, that's my bad. <laughs> no, it's okay. Didn't mean to have a conversation then. No, it's fine. <laughs> it, it's it's always like dicey because I, I want to do an audio check, but then I want to... I can't like disband the party because I have to do an audio check again anyway. Because during the um, practice at the start of the season, like... Thank God it was practice, but half of it, I, my audio wasn't in there anyway. So now I'm paranoid. Yeah, we'll see if my uh, thing even lets me do a broadcast. It says it's starting, but it's not doing anything. I It took me twice starting this broadcast for it to actually go live to YouTube. Sometimes it, PlayStation does that. Yep, three man booth, Fox is back. Can't broadcast. You can right. if nothing else, just uh save the gameplay footage with audio 
and then just post it later. Oh, look at that. Now it works. Okay. Yeah. It took me twice this morning. All right. Well, we'll try and get a little bit more professional moving forward here. No, so no, what's no. up, guys? <laughs> Oh, Brian and Lance in the booth waiting on Nick to join for the three-man booth for today's Grand Prix here at SRL Season 9, Round 16, F1 2023 on the PlayStation platform. I am back for today, possibly for the Singapore Grand Prix, but Brian is still your main man in the booth as we head into today's race. And Brian, we got a lot to talk about heading into this race. Yeah, so Max Mulder, the the man who every Saturday morning says today I'm going to win, he's decided it's his swan song, Spa's his last race in SRL for now. I feel like a lot of drivers have retired from SRL only to come back, uh, maybe when a game's been improved, maybe for other reasons. Samuel Brandt has returned, Danish driver, Lewis Marshall full time, and uh, the the only other American you know, besides you and me, has decided to sit out for a little bit. Uh, penalty at Jetta. And uh, he's just going to take some time to cool off. He is second in the Drivers' Championship. But that just means Jensen Randall is going to pull away a little bit more. Yes, Jensen Randall, a.k.a. Jensen Hamilton. 90-point lead in the standings over Logan Aron. Unfortunately, Logan get a little bit of a hot-headed uh, altercation on the track with Nicolo Falzarezzi at Jetta caused him to have a penalty that he then carried over into real life and decided he was going to not participate for the foreseeable future moving forward. So to get his uh, replacement, we've got Sam Brandt coming back into SRL after a two-year absence. So good for Sam to come back and join the fray. And as you said, Max Mulder, who's been a part of SRL for a number of seasons now, is going to be stepping aside as well. So too bad for that. Max, uh, not not, a, not as good an F1 driver as he was the sports car <laughs> driver. He did have a GT3 championship in the Project Cars 2. Uh, he also won the Snowball Derby a couple years ago in the rally and a blizzard that we did. But uh, unfortunately, Max will be stepping away for the foreseeable future as well. But nonetheless, we still got, so what, 17 drivers going to be qualifying today? We It's going to be a, a pretty packed grid. I don't know that we've had a round yet where it's been 20, but we've gotten very close. But we do have a lot of full-time drivers, which is always nice. We've got people with lots of points to gain here, and we've got my favorite track on the calendar, frankly. It's Spa. One of the most famous tracks, one of the longest laps we're going to have. And I've been practicing my French for the various parts of the track we're going to see today. Yeah, and 17 drivers. And as you said, uh, Belgium, Spa, good old-fashioned OG F1 track, if you will. Uh, obviously, it's a racer's favorite. It seems to be a uh, player's favorite, if you will. Old school layout, not a lot of runoff, a lot of room for mistakes. Looks like we're getting ready to kick off here in this 18-minute short qualifying session for round 16. And we'll run down the driver lineup once we get in there and see who all is going to be out on track today. That and I don't know everybody's names yet. There's a couple of new guys here that I'm not completely familiar with. It's all right. We've got uh, new drivers to you. Uh, most likely would be Borbune, Dutch driver. Uh, who came on a few rounds ago? A few rounds ago, and the Red Bull Eric Algersma, at least he had been Red Bull previously. Some strong outings from him. The Spaniard Noel Rosso Abia, also a just the mid pack, upper mid pack has been very competitive all season. And then looking up and down the grid, I think you'd be familiar with many of those names. Alexi Quaviniemi there changed his handle zero AK in the Aston Martin. Rookie driver. Sensation, really. Jamie Yerstrom. Just some bad luck between him and some podium finishes this season. But one of my favorite drivers to watch. And obviously we have the points leader, Jensen Randall. As I like to call him, Jensen Hamilton from the hybrid era. Oh, boy. Oh, we've got rain in qualifying, so that'll be interesting. Not sure that that's going to run into the race but rain is always the great equalizer as they say 
So 18-minute short qualifying session kicking off, and this rain might have caught some of these guys off guard. Nobody heading out on the track just yet. Well, it's something we've been waiting on all season is a rainy race. I don't know that we've had too much. Uh, I think Hungary we might have had a little bit. Looking back, I think maybe the uh, Dutch Grand Prix at Zandvoort, there might have been some. But nothing where we've had standing puddles and real race strategy come into play. And as always, first on the track, the Aston Martin of Alexei Koiviniemi, Finnish driver. We'll go on board through Radion here. About 1.2 miles of flat out action here into Kemmel. And there's Americans in the booth. We're going to be speaking in miles today. I have no <laughs> idea what a kilometer is. A kilometer is 62 hundredths of a mile. And I'm not <laughs> willing to do the math to tell you exactly how long that is. Around La Home here. Into Brussels. Tricky, tricky breaking point here. Downhill, almost a double apex, and in the rain. Traction going to be at a premium. Ironically enough, even though Nick Van Gelder isn't here in the booth with us, hopefully he'll join us here in a little bit. This is where I was introduced to Nick Van Gelder, was actually at this track back in season three. And uh, he put on quite a display that race, uh, became the resident 10 block with his drifting skills and it was quite a show to watch and then he obviously season four champion as we ride along with Aleski on his outlap and I am still trying to figure out how to work everything. That's all right. Into Blanchemont here. Again, another flat out section. A nice overtaking opportunity coming up here before the famous bus stop chicane and nearly 4.4 miles around Spa, but a lot of flat out sections, a lot of high speed. So not too long of a lap on the timing table. We'll see if Alexi is going to get a qualifying lap underway if it's just checking the setup here. Definitely looks like inter type uh, conditions out there as he goes a little bit wide losing traction. Then we'll run on the downhill with him, jumping on board as he heads through Eau Rouge and up into the Camel Strait on top of Radion. Little touch and go there. Yeah, the back and end is uh, bore. getting getting loose here for Koibi Niemi so far. You're seeing a lot of caution flags fly in Sector 2. Looks like a couple of quick on-offs. Caution flag in Sector 3. But right now we're riding on board with Aleski. He's got traffic in front of him too. I think it's an Alpine, perhaps of Max Mulder. Mm -hmm. oh, well, that solved that issue. Max Mulder has left the session, so no more traffic for Koi Yemi to deal oh. with here. And he is not sure if that's an internet issue or if it's by design, but Max Mulder out of the way. So Aleski going to continue and trekking on here as he heads out of Sector 2 and into Sector 3. And under dry conditions, you'd be coming out of this corner and you'd stay flat all the way down to the bus stop. Yeah, it could definitely be a little tricky here. And, you know, parts of this straight will dry out too. So especially if the conditions change, you might see drivers taking an odd line here to preserve tires. And Alexi will set the pace here. He's going to cross. It's going to be close to about a 149, 150, I think. Ah, that's right. Start, finish. Always further down than I think. 152, almost even for him. We'll pick up Jamie Jägerstrom. Looks like he's heading into Sector 3. He's heading down the long runway. Be heading towards the bus stop. He'll be the second one, I think, to set a time. Meanwhile, you check that around turns 15, 16. We've got a long train of cars. Yeah, surprisingly, a lot of traffic as Nicolo Falzarezzi just set the fastest lap at a 151.766. Free Abile, 152.397. Jägerstrom now goes third quickest with a 152.238. 
And Let's... Dion Stahl, 153.671. Fastest lap, Jensen Randall with a 158.53. Wow. He's the first driver to crack into the 150s, nine tenths of a second faster than Falzarezzi. And you know, Let's get some, I assume everyone's on the enters, of course they are, but the way Jensen found an extra second there made me wonder. And Ivan Burrito, 154.606. The Alpha Tori of Lewis Marshall, full-time driver, back in SRL. Looks like an invalidation, a little hop there through a rouge. And Lewis invalidates his lap time, unfortunately. Italian Lewis Vincenzo is... Torre here through Kimmel. Oh, Vincenzo in the Mercedes. He was in the Sauber the last time I saw him. Oh, and he oh, has a spin. Boy. And he bends it into the wall. Oh, and he's broken the front suspension. Wow. Vincenzo is done. I didn't think he hit the wall that hard, but he well. is done and out of qualifying. <laughs> Apologies, Vincenzo. That's a classic commentator's curse. Yes, indeed. So it looks like Max Mulder is back out on track. He's on an out lap here in the Alpine. We'll pick him up and see if he can maybe set some sort of time. We've got Sandro Dulius is on an out lap and Senna in the Haas. <clears throat> ah, that's right. Another American, so we both agree it's pronounced Haas. No, no right. hass in this booth. <laughs> well, <laughs> let the Americans pronounce the American stuff correctly. There you go. We'll screw up the rest of it. So Senna Hayware is starting his first timed lap down the hill into Eau Rouge, up the hill to Radion. Very touching to go again off the throttle. See if he can get a good run down the Kemmel Street. And again, a lot of caution flags flying, sectors two and three. A lot of guys having some quick on-offs. Yeah, I think I think Blanchemont really getting a lot of folks. Normally it's an easy flat out, but you might need a slight lift here in these conditions. So now around Brussels here, I think this is going to be, if it stays wet for the race, that little Brussels curve is going to catch a lot of folks off guard. Well, it's downhill, too, so the cars have a tendency to understeer under power when coming out of the corner anyways, and the rain is just going to exacerbate that. As you see, Senna is really pushing the limits on some of the outside of these curbs. I'm, yeah, I'm impressed. Uh, I think Senna, is, he's going for it here. He's really, as you say, he's getting as much of the track width as he can get here, and he's keeping it together so far. And he's gone purple sector two. So sent on a little bit of a run here in the Haas. And he gets through Blanchemont unimpeded, unlike some of the other drivers so far. Well, I uh, kind of was interesting to see that he downshifted and kept it to the floor. A lot of guys have been bailing out on the power and keeping it in eighth. So a little bit of a different take on that. Going to come across the line, 12th quickest, 154.662. Good qualifying effort for Senna here in the Haas. And we'll pick up Ivan Burrito in the other Mercedes. He's getting ready to come down into the bus stop. Even Brito said. Back. Not in the bus stop. Another purple sector. I wonder if track evolution is in play here early. It doesn't look like it's gotten any drier, but <clears throat> that sector two, there's time gained there for drivers recently. And it looks like Nick Van Gelder has joined the session officially. So which means Nick should be joining us <clears throat> here in the booth here momentarily. Nick, unfortunately, race suspension due to too many penalty points. And unfortunately for the season four champ, that has become a norm over the past number of seasons. I always seem to have Nick with me in, <laughs> for at least one race per season due to circumstances such as that. Ivan Brito does come across the line at a 152.667. Ah. And Just there is our driver analyst, Nick Van Gelder, right on time. 
Hello everyone. Good, good day. And uh, yeah, apologies for being slightly late, but the sea qualifying is still uh, on the way with about eight minutes remaining. So um, yeah, good to uh, to join you guys here in the booth. And uh, well, oh, three I... commentators. Let, let's hope that. Oh, is, as I speak, <laughs> the old star I think is crashed out, hasn't it? I I need to. It's like as soon as I highlight someone we haven't really focused on yet, they send it into the wall and the tire <laughs> pops off. So apologies, well, to Dion Stahl. It's, it's... It's the classic commentator's curse. Exactly. It? It's uh, and there's three of us today, so that's three times as many curses. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. I was about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to be there. Unfortunately, I'm not on the track, which I would have uh, loved, but uh, yeah, uh, I have to I have to sit out this one after an incident at Jeddah. So uh, it is also nice uh, to join you guys. It's it is one of my favorite tracks here at Spa. Um, but, uh, you know, it's also uh, a track which always brings up some good races, so that's what we're going to see that today. And we actually talked about that a little bit earlier, as my introduction to you for SRL was at this oh, yeah. track, and Sam Brandt <laughs> is now retired from the session. Sam Brandt set a time of a 2.17.649, so uh, he's not necessarily knocking the rust off with that time and a retirement. Well, unless he's looking for some sort of last to first challenge and was just testing setup, yeah, I, there will be work to do. He's got time to rejoin, maybe, and get back out there, but it's such a long outlap at Spa that it's going to be pushing it. And I am currently watching Eric, I don't know his last name here in the Red Bull, so that's going to be. Uh... <laughs> I'm trying to pronounce that one. It's Eric Elversma, but uh, make of them a drill. Years from uh, in the Williams, another purple sector too. So, maybe, sect maybe we could try saying Elgerstva or something. <laughs> uh, Jensen Rainbow actually... approves upon his time, one fifty two three nine. Finds another six tenths of a second, and we're getting ready to watch Jamie come across the line. See what kind of time he can set. See if he'll improve, and he jumps for up to fourth, a one fifty one seven seven zero. Yeah, very good luck from Jensen at 150.28, tenths clear of the rest of the field. But uh, Eric's second name is actually Simon. That might be slightly easier to pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just call him Eric Simon. But um, yeah, it was in similar conditions, wasn't it, in Season 3 when I when I made my return to SRL. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, Sam with a 2 minute 17, I'm sure he can do better than that. But he's actually returning to his team that he was with in season one as well red bull before i joined the team it was actually sam who was in that team in the very first season so good to see him back here uh, in srl in it may have been his first team but he will always be associated with haas for being yeah, such a definitely. long time driver yeah, for that yeah. team and the same can be said for logan arand logan obviously going to be even though he's not with us now will always be associated with haas uh Really, the ironic part with Logan is throughout the course of his co online career with IRL and some of the other online racing leagues, he always drove the Haas. He was always the American in the American car. And he's won multiple championships from other leagues, but it's a shame to see that he is uh, letting his frustrations get the better of him and sitting out for the foreseeable future. Yeah, exactly. I really didn't expect Logan to actually uh, drop out of the league after that incident in uh, in Jeddah because uh, yeah I mean I'm sure you've already touched on it but he got a penalty for a safety car restart where he uh, bumped into Nikola Fatrasi twice it probably wasn't intentional uh, but you know the second one it was pretty uh, you know clear from Nikola's point of view that he couldn't really go anywhere you could say that he shouldn't have been there in the first place but you know Logan got the penalty for compromising Nikola Fatrasi's race and yeah he was so frustrated by that and he just didn't agree with it to the extent that he was just kind of fed up and decided to completely leave the league altogether, which I don't think many people would have expected because he is still second in the championship and was still, uh, you know, having a pretty good season and even slightly uh, challenging uh, Jensen, at least in the championship, but even in a couple of races, you know, Logan is a very, very fast driver, was able to fight for race wins, like he did in Jeddah, where I actually crossed the line at first. Well, meanwhile, well, quietly, a, uh... go ahead. Eric Erzma up to P4 with the 151.3, and Nicolo Falzarezzi, the second driver to crack into 150s. But Lance, go for it. Well, I was going to say uh, to you know double on top of Nick's point. You know, the the interesting here is that me and Nick are both on the stewards panel. You know, analyzing that penalty. Uh, Nick, obviously, from a driver standpoint. Me, from you know, observational standpoint. And I think. 
the the interesting thing about that whole scenario, Nick brings up that Bowserezzi's car shouldn't have been there to begin with. Um, and yes, the first contact was definitely incidental. The second contact was definitely like, you know, a shoulder check. Like, what are you doing here? Get out of the way. It was under caution. And I think yeah. that's where the lines blur a little bit with SRL and some of the online players where SRL, for lack of a better term, takes itself a little bit more seriously as far as an online league goes and try to produce the same type of racing you would see in actual F1 where obviously driver would not get away with doing a shoulder check under any circumstance where I think from Logan's standpoint, he still has the mentality that it is a video game and Falzarezzi, one, he shouldn't have been there. Two, he was still there for an extended period of time, long enough for Logan to be like, hey, get out of here. And I think that's where the frustration is for Logan is that he's looking at it from a video game standpoint, whereas SRL, the governing body, is looking at it from a more realistic standpoint. And we can't allow that type of contact to happen regardless of the situation. Yeah, that's a good point. I think you're dead right on that one. Uh, I think, yeah, Logan indeed, he sort of has his own perspective and sometimes struggles to see a different perspective, you know, and I, I think you made a good made a good point there that, uh, you know, yeah, SRL kind of uh, uses, you know, a penalty system and a way of looking at things similar to what a real-life motorsport series would, whereas indeed Logan maybe doesn't take it that seriously and, and thinks that things like that are ridiculous. And I am riding on board with Sandra, who just went for an off-road excursion here on an outlap <laughs> and basically invalidated his outlap. I don't even know if that's possible. Well, with less <laughs> well, than a minute well, left. For his actual lap. <laughs> he, he's, he, I don't know that he's going to get to start finish <laughs> yeah, he's, with a I minute left. That's what he's trying to do. I think he was cutting the chicane to try and make up time. Probably, yeah. It's going to be pretty close. I think he'll just about make it still. But... Uh... He's going to pretty much push like it is a qualifying lap on this lap to make it for his actual qualifying lap. Now, it should be noted while we were chit-chatting, Falzarezzi has been the only other driver to crack into the 150s. He's six-tenths of a second off of Jensen Randall's time, and he's currently on an outlap. I don't know that he's going to have enough time to get across the line. I can't see the clock. The last I saw it might have been 20-some-odd seconds, but we keep getting the caution flag in Sector 2. Looks like there's a car off in that area. So 10 seconds left to play. Now, if he can get across the line in the next five seconds, he'll be able to start a flying lap, but it's going to be close. And I don't oh, think Falzarezzi is going to get to... Max yeah. Welder able to get his only qualifying time up. Indeed. Yeah, Max Welder was just about on time, and Nikola Falzarezzi and Sonoduli just missed it there on the south finish line. See who's on a timed lap or not. Nobody. Tim Bentick. Uh, let's see. Free Abile is going to be locked in, it looks like. Uh, Aleski looks like he's on a flyer. He's in sector two. And now the checkered flag is falling on some drivers. So Falzarezzi's locked in. Eric is locked in. Senna Haywire has retired from the session. He's going to be locked in at a 153.269. Good enough for 15th so far. Riding along with Aleski. Lewis Marshall looks like he's done for the session. He's locked in at a 151.667. Currently good enough for sixth. Aleski in sector two. And it looks like Aleski's invalidated his lap time. So he is going to be done. He's going to be locked in at a 151.590. Tim Ventic still on a flyer. V11. Yeah, I was looking at some people that were improving. Borbuna just uh, improved his time by half a second. Just missed out on the top ten. I think Noah Smith quietly getting a 150.5. Uh, we missed that when I saw an earlier lap from Noah Smith. But you want to talk about a strong bit of form recently, the Haas driver. Currently P2, yeah, and I don't know that anyone's going to be able to improve their times enough to knock Noah Smith off the first row. Yeah, great qualifying effort for the young driver. 155.23. Tim Ventick's going to come across the line. He improves his time, but not necessarily his position. And looks like we've got Ivan Brito. He's going to be invalidated his lap time. So Ivan Brito looks like he's going to be the last driver on track. Unfortunately, his time's invalidated, so he'll be locked in at the 152.667. Yeah, Noah Smith still approves the lap time to 1 minute 50.3, so getting pretty close to that lap time from Jensen Randall. Very impressive from the house driver. But uh, it's still Jensen Randall just about who is uh, 
maintain the ball position there with 150.239. Well, we'll see if we'll have rain during the race. It should make for something a little more interesting. I think the positions as drivers come into Kimmel is going to be fun to watch. DRS is such a big factor here. It's almost uh, yeah. It's almost a curse to be in first place with a close gap behind you on the penultimate lap. <laughs> exactly. So, Jensen Renault in pole position, very impressive lap from the English driver, from Noah Smith. Nicola Falzrezi, Erik Elgersma in P4, very good stuff as well from the Red Bull. From the Freer Bile, Alexi Kovanemi, Lewis Marshall, Sandra Dulis, uh, Jägerstrom, and Tim Venti completing the top 10. I always uh, struggle to pronounce his actual name. <laughs> from Jamie. <laughs> he, says that, he says that we can just drop the G, so Jägerstrom's what I've been uh, advised from the man himself. But okay, okay, okay. close gaps between uh, really like yeah. P4 and, and P10 there, all within a second of each other. They're pretty close, especially for a wet qualifying session. Right. Yeah, Noah Smith had all sorts of pace. I, I know Jensen Randall makes it look easy, but it, today he had to work a little bit for the qualifying. Definitely, yeah. It was definitely uh, close behind him. This is interesting. Um, thought it was a full up, but I thought I joined as expected. I'm quickly going to have to get myself out of here. Because it seems like I've been placed into a car, which is... Uh, oh, interesting. <laughs> so, so maybe just I'm... lay back and retire the car? Exactly. <laughs> I should, because otherwise my car is going to stay on the track if I, if I leave it. So I'm going to have to retire it. That's, that's not ideal. Taking uh, on-track analyst to the extreme here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that would be pretty uh, ridiculous. <laughs> that would be on-track too in the commentary. Now, unfortunately, of course, unfortunately I am starting a loss. So I think I should just be able to retire without interfering with anyone. Well, we're going to do the formation lap. And Jensen Randall with another pole position. Looks like he is going to be starting on hard tires. He's going to be followed closely by Noah Smith. And this is going to be an open tire strategy. Is that correct, Nick? As they didn't have... Yeah, of course. Yeah, the driver uh, can on whatever tires they like. All the fresh tires, of course. Uh, you know, they will have multiple sets as well available still because you don't use the, the sets of soft stuff for the quality. So everyone, even with late safety cars, will probably just keep bidding to uh, fresh tires. Noah Smith starting in second. Niccolo Falzarezzi will be starting in the third position. Eric with a good qualifying effort for fourth. Free Abile in the McLaren starting in the fifth position. I'm going to go on Lesky. board with our, our commentator uh, comrade here in the Williams. <laughs> no, just, uh, just ignore me. Just uh, <laughs> pretend I'm not there. Aleski and the Aston Martin be starting in the sixth position. Lewis Marshall making another full-time return. He seems to do one at least once a year. Starting in the seventh position, Sandro Julius, probably a little bit disappointed with himself, going to be starting in eighth, but he's had the most consistency of the midfield heading into this race. Jamie Jägerstrom starting in ninth. Tim Ventick, former champion himself, going to be starting in the tenth position. And I don't know who Bor Bor it's, Boone yeah. is. <laughs> Bor Boone. Well, yeah, uh, you pretty much uh, nailed the pronunciation, though. He's actually a good mate of uh, Erik Elgersma. They're both uh, working colleagues at the Race Planet, the local aquatic track in Amsterdam. So they're good mates of mine as well. So I'll be keeping an eye out on them. But uh, yeah, it is pronounced like Borbune. <laughs> Got Noel Rosso Abia in the Alpha in P12. Even Brito, of course, the Mercedes. So I, I'm always excited to see Ivan on the softs. I think he has good racecraft. He's got good awareness on the track, even though, you know, we checked in with him earlier in the wet and saw him just take it straight into a wall. But Yvonne, it's always good, clean, hard racing for a position where Yvonne Brito is. Yeah, yeah I've always enjoyed Buller. watching uh, Ivan Brito over the years. He's he's a very hit and miss driver, unfortunately. Seems like he has a lot of bad luck, but uh, when he puts on a show, he puts on a really good one. Yeah, and also it seems like this is going to be the last race of the season for uh, Max Mulder starting in P14. Uh, potentially even his last race in Esmeralda, but he is saying that he's calling it today for uh, 
for this year. So hopefully you can have a solid race. The three Dutchies there in P40, 15, and 16 with Senna Herweyer and Dion Sal in the Ferrari. And well, everyone Robin getting in position. And, and then, uh, yeah, Lance, you take it away from here for race start. We're going to give it a try. <laughs> it's been a year since I've done it. Waiting on the five red lights. Lights out. Time to run what you brung. And they're away in a puff of smoke. Great start for Noah Smith as he comes on the outside. And he's getting ahead of Jensen Randall as they head down into the hairpin. Can he hold that position? They're going to go side by side as they come out of the corner. And Nick Van Gelder has retired from the session, obviously. <laughs> Noah Smith out in front of Jensen Randall as they head down to Eau Rouge and up towards Radion. Down the Kemmel Straight, we're going to hop on board with Jensen Randall, and he's going to have a slipstream coming down the Kemmel Straight, trying to hold off, and there's a battle behind him. Oh, and there's contact! Falzarezzi and Eric, and there's a virtual safety car already. Yeah, there was an incident uh, involving Senna Herbae and even Brito as well into one Senna Herbae already out of the race. But a very good start from Noah Smith to get the run on Jensen Randall, and also a bit of contact with, I think it was Falzarezzi and uh, Erik Ergesma, wasn't it? Alvarezma definitely so. took the worst of it. Uh, looked close to going off track and Kimmel lost a position, I believe. And also uh, some visual damage on the front wing of Feltz Racy in the Alfa Romeo. So he certainly has front wing damage. Uh, possibly Eric Agusma as well, but it looks like his car is still pretty much uh, intact. But yeah, definitely uh, the biggest hit for Feltz Racy there with quite a bit of front wing damage. So a great jump at the start for Noah Smith. And that may be just the difference in medium tires to hard tires. And now we've got a full course caution, so it's full safety car. And Senna Haywire, unfortunately, with another DNF. And yeah, obviously Nick Van Gelder. Nick Van Gelder has a DNF, just for those that don't know, that he is serving his race ban. So he was not supposed to participate, so a little bit of a glitch in the, in the matrix, but no big deal. Nick's going to be in the booth <laughs> with us for the remainder of the race. I like that, a glitch in the matrix. But uh, yeah, just to ignore my name on the front of there, obviously. <laughs> uh, luckily, I didn't uh, cause any problems because I was able to just uh, stay on the grid for a couple seconds. And Bowser really has jumped into the pits. He's going to get that wing swapped out. Now Nick will... Should he stick with the hard tires and throw another hard set on there and go back to running plan A? It doesn't look like he is. He's actually going on the soft tires. Wow, that's very from uh, the Italian. So, yeah, it was a good point. I mean, he could have just uh, kind of restarted all my new set of hards, but he's opting to go soft. It looks like one of the Alpines came in. It might have been Max Mulder has come in. Nicola Fausrezzi. Dion Stahl looks like he picked up some damage as well. So Lewis Marshall up into sixth place again a couple of places. It's also his return to SRL as a full-time driver. So good to see uh, the number 82 back there in P6. Lewis Marshall, the avatar. And Ivan Burrito is heading into the pits. He's got a flat left front, so he's had some damage somewhere. Oh, you he's see... missing his front wing. Well, that'll, that'll certainly... <laughs> do it but he goes from soft to hard so I, I don't know that 20 laps granted a couple of them under safety uh, is doable on the hards on such a long course but everyone who's pitted early has gone a different direction yeah that is going to be a long stretch even on hard tires Yeah, it is. I mean, surely it's not possible to actually complete 21 laps on a set of hearts around this track. That's going to be near on impossible, but let's see uh, if we will decide. With next oh, and Ivan Brito is retired from the sessions. So Ivan pitted for a new wing and a new set of tires and decided he didn't want to do this anymore, I guess. Yeah, very, uh, very interesting. It looks like he just retired mm -hmm. in the pit lane. So uh, that's uh, a bit bizarre from uh, Ivan Brito. Maybe he had a lot of damage to the floor of his car or to the rear wing or something like that. That's, of course, not repairable and can influence uh, the car a lot, like driving with rear wing damage or something like that is pretty awful. <laughs> so maybe that um, caused him to uh, make the decision to uh, leave the race. But, uh, yeah, very unfortunate for the Portuguese driver. 
So technically started with 19 cars, now down to 17, as we lost Ivan Brito and Senna Haywire in a first lap incident. Noah Smith took the lead at the jump from Jensen Randall. Lewis Marshall moved up a couple of spots into sixth. And Sam Brandt in his return as well, up to 13th position. I think it's always interesting. You see some of these drivers, I think, choose to go with a soft compound early, kind of banking on a gamble that has paid off in the recent rounds, which is an early safety car. Uh, this one uh, certainly earlier than maybe <laughs> we've seen since Australia. But, uh, you know, I, I see Jensen Randall. He likes to go for a long first stint, and you can't knock the results from Jensen Randall. But I would always see other drivers like Logan Oren go soft early and kind of bank on something like this happening, getting positions early on and then being able to get a kind of a reduced pit stop. So I'll be curious to see if there's more safety cars. When does Jensen kind of adapt the plan? I think he's on a different race than Noah Smith right now who got that early lead. Well, I think a lot of that too is probably going to come down to if and how long Jensen actually gets stuck behind Noah Smith could alter the way he wants to run his tire strategy. We've, we've certainly yeah. seen Jensen work well with... Uh, other drivers near the top of the grid, especially early on in a race, you know, he'll work together to increase their gap from the drivers behind them, uh, change positions, manage that ERS. I, I think he and Noah Smith could do that if they find themselves pulling ahead. But it's going to be hard when he's on the hard compound and Noah Smith on the mediums. Well, there's a couple of fast drivers behind them. I mean, Eric, a impressive qualifying effort, good start, free at Bile, uh, very quick, very talented. And obviously, aleski has been here with SRL for a number of years, so he's put on a number of podiums and a number of wins, so he's definitely very fast as well. And Lewis Marshall, we'll see if he can knock the rust off and maybe move his way up from six. And finally getting race control to tell us that the safety car will be in the, this lap. Yeah, four miles Ooh. never felt so long as it has on these safety car laps. <laughs> yeah, it looks like everyone on mediums and hearts are just looking to do a once from this point, but I think maybe the drivers of the Pitters for Shots are basically just counting on a second safety car, or maybe they generally think a two-stop from here on in is going to be uh, quicker, but uh, of course there is quite a, a good chance that this isn't the last set that we've seen today. So Noah Smith will be the control car, and we will see when he decides to go as they head up towards the bus stop chicane. Looking a little overcast there as uh, Noah Smith on board with him. So I wonder if there's rain underway. Definitely clouds in the sky, a little hazy in the background. Noah Smith gets the jump. We're back on our green flag racing. Gaps Jensen Randall just a little bit as they head into the first corner. We're going to hop on board with Jensen Randall and see if we can get more than one lap in as they head downhill towards Eau Rouge and up Radion. And onto the Kemmel straight. No DRS available just yet, but Jensen's going to try and use the slipstream. Here comes Eric, though. Eric's got a great slipstream. And it's a three car battle for first place. Eric all over the back of Jensen Randall. Randall all over the back of Noah Smith. Yeah, Eric decided to think better of it. Also, very close uh, further back with uh, Jager Strom, Seto Julius, and. Uh... Noel very closely together, Tim Smith following, uh, Tim Mentick, sorry, following him as well in P10. A couple of position changes for the back of Nicola Falsaresi up into P13. Very close to the McLaren of Robin Herzenhagen, and he just dispatched uh, Vincenzo Torre as well in the Mercedes, so uh, quite a lot going on here. After this restart, oh, Falsaresi there up the inside of form there. Oh, a bit of contact on the exit as well. Great racing here on the restart, but... The McLaren of Herstagen has got the inside line as we go into the final sector here. Fonsese is still trying to hang it on the inside, but just about can't get the position for now. Yeah, wow, did Robin Herstagen take that line just very defensively around turn 13. And Herstagen is holding off Falzarezzi. Falzarezzi, the faster driver on the faster tires, and he's finally going to go around the outside, and it looks like he's going to bring... Sam Brandt with him. No, that's not Sam. Who's in the Mercedes? That's going to be Vincenzo Torre, the Italian. Oh, that's right. I'm used to seeing him in the Sauber. That's my bad. Alfa Romeo. Oh, and there's a three-car battle going on back there. 
Looks like Dion Stahl, a little contact with Sam Brandt. Meanwhile, Jägerstrom and Lewis Marshall battling it out. It looks like Jägerstrom got ahead of Lewis Marshall for the sixth position. And Jensen Randall closing in on Noah Smith at the top of Radion. Down the Kemmel straight, and he's going to dive to the outside. Eric's going to try and come with him as he gets the double slipstream. Oh, boy. And they split him like Mika Hocken and Michael Schumacher. Oh, great run for Eric. They're out the inside mm -hmm. into second place. So Jensen Rudder now leading the way from Eric Elgersma and Noah Smith there. Eric really capitalized on the momentum he had coming over uh, ready on there as Noah Smith tries to hang it on the outside. That's not going to work through there. Jensen's looked so much better on the brakes coming into the home too. It seems like the last lap, even though he's got a tire disadvantage, he really made time up on Noah Smith. And this time he gets the overtake to stay and he's already got that gap of seven tenths. And that's all Jensen needed was a little bit of clean air, and he is off to the races. So really, we're watching the battle for second, which is going to be the one to watch. As Jensen, as you said, already seven-tenths of a second up. Also, uh, some fun games going on for a P15. Sam Brent just managed to uh, get through on the uh -oh, overtime. Oh, looks like Lewis Marshall's had an issue. Yeah, Lewis Marshall's off oh, into the gravel. Oh, he's in the gravel. And he has dropped all the way back down to last place, P17. Fortunately, can continue his way. So no damage for Lewis Marshall, but he probably, judging from that area, probably got punted. We'll jump back to the lead battle. Too. DRS is now enabled, so things are really going to shake up here as they head up to the top of Radion and down the Kemmel Strait. And clearly, around Blanchemont, it's El Herzma who was able to really close that gap. And now, look at the slipstream. He's got tire advantage, and he's going to have he DRS. He actually had to uh, lift off there almost to not <laughs> get into the back of the Esther Martin as he pulls to the outside here on the cable straight. Can he do anything into the braking zone? And he's got the DRS advantage oh, as he tries to get around Jensen Randall. He's going to take the lead. Battle for third behind him, Free Abile. Battling with Noah Smith and Freeab mm, trying to run side by side there through the S's, and that's not going to work. It's always Freeab. The inside. <laughs> it's always oh, Freeab in a Haas. Always Freeab in a Haas on track. <laughs> yeah, Caution like flag just... flies sector two. Looks like that's Nicolo Falzarezzi or possibly Dion Stahl. And the safety car is out. Who has gone around? Yeah, it looks oh, like uh, Falzarezzi is, is missing his front wing Again. again. Let's find Dion Stahl. Dion Stahl, no damage done to his car, but he def definitely dropped a couple of spots. So Falzarezzi with his second on-track altercations today. And our second safety car. Yes, this front wing damage for Nicolo, much, much more obvious and severe than last time. So six laps in. Nick, you're the driver analyst. What do you do from a tire standpoint and position good, standpoint? Good question. Uh, I think maybe the drivers on mediums and hearts are going to prefer the track position. And just uh, for that, we'll see because they're now coming through the bus of chicane. I guess the judge is going to stay out. Yes, they are. Oh, actually, Jensen Randall does. He comes in. So he's trying to do the undercut on the rest of the field. Also, Noah Smith follows him into the pit lane. So Eric Elgusma has started to stay out. But it looks like a lot of drivers coming into the pits. Let's see. They're probably going to go, like, I guess the medium runners are going to go to hearts to so just go to the end. Maybe the medium runners, or sorry, the hard runners are going to try to stretch on mediums, like Jensen Rendell. He is going on mediums, that, but that's going to be near on impossible. I think he's committing himself to a two-stop now, as the SMR is double stack as well. But lots of drivers into the pit lane. Very interesting that Erik Elgersma has decided to stay out. So there is only a handful of drivers that decided to stay out in the midst of all that. Yeah, it's uh, it's puzzling because maybe from this lap onwards, going to a set of hearts is potentially possible. Although it is, of course, a, lo a long stretch. Uh, but I think as a medium runner, maybe it's better to take the risk to go to the hearts. But of course, on the mediums or already having started on the hard tires, it's a little bit more difficult because you, know, you can't stretch it on a set of mediums uh, from here on in. I I wouldn't believe so. Uh, yeah, interesting strategies going on, and also with Jensen Randall now. Uh, on a set of uh, medium tires. Let's see what he will uh, do and when he will pit again. So, Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, but I saw Eric and Freab, and I think only Max Mulder were the only ones that stayed yeah, out. Yeah, correct. Robin Hertzstadthagen also out there on six lap old mediums. As uh, is Dion Stahl, who's on yeah. the hearts. 
But uh, I, okay. I, I think, you know, I, I wonder if a driver like El Erzma and Freya Belay, if they want to stay ahead of the pack, stay out of where all the action's been. Because if, if, if I'm out there, you know, granted, I'm not nearly as quick as anyone on the grid. So interestingly I, enough, Jensen, the, the, the strategy mastermind, is the first driver out on fresh tires running third. I, yeah, I kind of, their... I, I feel another safety car. I'll just say that. I feel another safety car. <laughs> I, I'm kind of with Eric and Freya here. Yeah, because maybe, because, yeah, indeed, if there's going to be another safety car, like, at least they're not out of trouble. They still have track position, and they can still get another stop if there's a third one. I wonder if uh, Jensen Rendell made that decision, and that maybe everybody behind him sort of reacted to him, possibly follow him in, followed him into the pits. I don't know if I mean... maybe someone like Eric was called out by that and was expecting Jensen to also stay out. If I was a driver and the points leader decided to pit, I'm probably <laughs> going to pit. Yeah, because it looks like everybody behind him just decided to follow him in. I really wonder if Eric Elgusma planned this, or if he was expecting this to happen, or if he's thinking, like, maybe I'm called out there. But maybe he knows what he's doing. I'm going to go for the ladder. <laughs> so it looks like we're going to probably circulate at least one more lap under the safety car. Second one of the day. And it has been quite the shakeup just from the get-go. Eric has worked his way back up into first. Actually, I shouldn't say it back up into first. Has worked his way into first. Brought free Abile with him up into second. Jensen Randall started on pole. Lost position early to Noah Smith. And Max Mulder in his final SRL race for the time being, running in fourth position. Noah Smith has dropped to fifth through the pit sequence. Dion Stahl stayed out on track, moves up into sixth. Robin Herderstagen stayed out on track, works his way up to seventh. Alessi in eighth. Jimmy Jägerstrom is ninth. And Sandra Dooley is running a quiet race in tenth. Yeah, interestingly, also, uh, Nicola Falsesi decided to come in again. He didn't have any further damage, but he decided to ditch his heart to go back to the medium tire. Because he was running a last anyway, so he was able to get a free stop. Uh, but he is, uh, interestingly enough, preferring to be on the mediums and on the harsh at the moment. I think that's probably one of Falzarezzi's worst characteristics, is that he has a tendency to be very aggressive when he's deep in the pack trying to make up time. And I think that may have been what was his downfall in this scenario. Willing to bet he probably... Not on purpose, but probably caused the safety car. When you lose front wing like that, it's usually because you've rear-ended somebody <laughs> quite aggressively. Yeah, I mean, he would be very uh, keen to make up for that, being uh, back into P17. And maybe that's indeed why he decides to uh, go for the softer compound. So a couple of guys I didn't think I would see this deep in the field. Tim Ventic, a uh, former champion, running in 13th. Uh, Sam Brandt has just crashed into the During wall. I just safety picked car. that up. What is that about? <laughs> well, welcome back to SRL, Samuel Brandt. Okay, so I was going to say I didn't expect to see... And the safety car is in oh, this okay. lap. Oh. Yeah, the safety car has decided it's not a big deal. <laughs> we'll keep going. <laughs> so did Seb just lose it on his own, or did he get tagged? I only picked up the tail end. I don't know... I'm not going to lie... He might have just did that on purpose. It's kind of how it looked. He was going awfully fast in an awfully so slow se section. Okay, very interesting. Anyway, getting ready for the restart. It's Eric Elgersman leading the way. He can control the pace. So let's see where he will decide to go. He's slowing up a lot coming through bunch one here. <laughs> it's going to be crucial for him to get the run to get those guys out of the slipstream as they come up to the Camel Strait. Meanwhile, Nicolo just assessed a five-second penalty for a collision with Lewis Marshall in front of him. Does Nico have damage again after that, I wonder? Wow, this is turning out to be uh, quite the race. And Eric is now trying to separate himself as he gets on the gas. Race has been restarted. Let's see what happens when we come up the hill through Radion and Arouge. Eric Elgazma with a slight look up there, still manages to get the apex, but free relay is right behind him in that McLaren. Ooh, and it's a three-car breakaway as they head downhill into Eau Rouge. Meanwhile, wheel to wheel just behind them, Max Mulder and Dion Stahl. Oh, and Max Mulder runs wide, got arrow wash coming off of Noah Smith's car, almost bend it. 
Meanwhile, Free Abile making move for the lead. It's nearly three wide with uh, Jens Randall just in Ooh. behind them as well. Side oh. by side. Oh, bit of a moment for Bile. He cuts the corner and goes back up the inside into the lead. They're still side by side. Jens Randall just waits <laughs> to pick up the pieces, but Eric's about back into the lead here. <laughs> Oh my oh, god, you three wide into Brussels! <laughs> Jensen Randall with the two for one deal <laughs> heading into the corner and picks up the lead of the race! What? what? Stuff there. <laughs> just... Also, a lot of chaos further back there, a bit of an incident there coming through the corner of no name. Bob Bune managed to take advantage of that into P10. Robin Hersetagen in P12 in front of Louis Marshall. Very chaotic restart. Marshall gets run wide, and he's got cars coming up his rear. Here comes Vincenzo Torre now, trying to get to the inside of Noah, or Noel, I should say. We have Mexico battles also got through everywhere. The style. <laughs> yeah. Jamie uh, Jägerstrom also. Oh, the old style has lost it. Coming out of the corner there, into the second sector. He's into the wall, luckily still in the race. Gonna have to be careful. Uh oh, is the car beached? No, it's drivable. Oh, it looks like it is. No, he's no. Beached. It looks like he's stuck. Yeah, he's oh, got the man. revs in reverse. Yeah, okay, we're moving. Oh, he just got some traction. And did he just reset himself to the track? I don't know if he did, actually. It was uh, hard to see that. But uh, he can fortunately continue on his way after being a beach for a second there in the grass. as we open up lap 10. Noah Smith, fresher tires coming into Radion, trying to get the overtake done on Max Mulder. Max Mulder going defensive. Oh, and here come! Look at this, Oleski trying to get a two for one through a rouge of all places. Look at these three wide down, Kimmel. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Noah Smith is mowing the grass, <laughs> trying to get the pass done. Well, thank goodness we have three commentators because there is action up and down the grid. Yeah, it's hard to keep up even with three uh, <laughs> three guys in the booth. Oh, and Noah Smith tries to get to the inside. Very deep into the corner. They're side by side as they come out of it. This is Jägerstrom behind this battle. And now Jägerstrom's going to try and do a two for one. Oh, Max Mulder up the inside of Paul. Man, oh, he he's lost it. Contact. Oh, and oh, he's no. lost it. Somehow oh, Sandro. So dangerous there on the outside. Oh. Some wing damage to Max <laughs> Mulder, but drivable. Man, it's How so Sandro avoided that, yeah. I will never know. We'll get they the onboard. The outside, didn't they? Yeah, that was that was crazy how everyone managed to avoid Max on the outside of pool. That's one of the worst places to be in. Another and a safety third car as well. Safety car of the race. This has been unbelievable. Oh, and somebody's got wing damage. This is Dion Stahl. Looks like he's missing his front wing completely. That's probably from his off course altercation with the wall. Jensen is going into up. the pits. Yeah, so do Free Abile and Eric Elgesma all pulling each other into it so they can all get this free pit stop now. We're well cheap pit, so they are going to lose a couple places. So this is going to move Aleski up into the lead, who pitted last safety car. <laughs> we're only halfway through this race, fellas. It is. <laughs> it, we're yeah, it's in about like it's half. For a very long. <laughs> yeah, we've had about 25 miles just under safety car. <laughs> This is something that Koivi Niemi will, has done before, where on a safety car, he stays out and everyone else behind him seems to pit. He, he gains quite a few positions, but we've seen the tires drop off for him doing this before. Well, I think the interesting thing in this scenario is that this safety car, he is the only driver to have stayed out. Everybody else pitted. But again, you know, if... If you had these drivers like Alverzma and Belay, who were banking perhaps on another safety car, that paid off. Uh, so they they gained a lot of positions not pitting on the last safety car. Now they come out Freya Belay third place with softs. So I think Freya saying uh, he's going to take these softs all the way to the end, or maybe hoping for another safety car for a shootout in the last couple laps. Well, that was going to be my question for Nick. How long do you think you can get those softs to last? Because you see Bile and Jägerstrom have both put on soft tires. They're the only drivers on the soft tires. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. I think those softs don't really last that long. I, I guess about six, seven laps, something like that. So, um, yeah, they're going very aggressive. It might not be too bad for Alexi Kovnemi having stayed out mediums because these mediums are only four laps old. So these tires aren't that much older to, uh, to rush the field. So I can get why he decided to uh, prefer being in the lead or slightly... Uh, more worn tires, but it's an Aston Martin 1-2, or 1-2-3 almost with the safety car, <laughs> nicely joining them <laughs> as well. But um, 
interesting for Alexei Kovanemi, but I think it's not that bad of a call for him since his tires are still relatively fresh. So Aleski takes the lead under the pit sequence. He's the only driver who did not pit under the third safety car. Jensen Randall, your championship points leader, who's been battling first, second, and third all day, currently back into second place. Freya Bile is up into third. Eric, who's also been battling up in the top three as well, running in fourth. Noah Smith, who had the lead early, started second, got the lead, hitting into the first corner, down in the fifth. And Bo Borbune is running sixth. Yeah, it's like his name is just a second bit. <laughs> I just the, the American in me just wants to call him Bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but indeed he's already in six, so he made up a lot of positions in the pit stop phase, despite having pitted as well. So good to see him up into a sixth place in front of Sonny Julius. And Sandra running seventh somehow managed to miss Max Mulder's car sitting in the middle of the corner. Tim Ventic is up into eighth. Vincenzo Tori running ninth, and Robert Herderstagen rounding out your top 10 points paying positions. Oh, and uh, the Alpha Tower of Lewis Marshall has spotted coming out of the first corner. I think he might have picked up a little bit of front wing damage. I don't know if he lost it on himself, but it looked like there was a bit of uh, uh, scruffing going on. You're right. The right side of the front wing looks like he's got damage, so I guess another pit stop for Lewis Marshall. Yeah. It's going to be very annoying for Lewis Marshall. That was a bit weird there, because all the drivers were a bit too close for being on the safety car uh, face. Uh, I'm going to stay on Lewis just for a moment to see if there's any type of retaliatory action, but it looks like he's <laughs> staying Surprising calm himself. in this scenario. But yeah, right front end plate gone for Lewis Marshall as he makes his uh, return to full-time racing again. It's, it's like pro wrestling, right? No one ever really retires from SRL. <laughs> <Right. laughs> they all come back at yeah. least once. I'm excited for Freya Belai going to the softs. That he's, he's always been a driver who's trying to push it as far as he can. Sometimes he pushes it too far, but he's, he's looking for a race win. He's had the podium so many times. I'm, uh, I think it's. I'm kind of unabashedly a fan of Freya Bala. I'm always rooting for him to finally get that race victory. <laughs> well, you know, he made a great. He, when, when he came upon the league, it was an amazing run of top five finishes that he had, and we all thought for sure that he would easily get a win at some point. And the mere fact that he hasn't gotten that maiden win is extremely surprising to me, because he's fast, he's skillful, he's a good, clean driver. He's got all of the makings. He just for whatever reason, hasn't been able to ever put it together completely to get that race win. There's there's something yeah. about the McLaren livery and uh, stories like that, I guess. <laughs> Even real life, isn't it? But the yeah, he definitely deserves to, uh, to win a race through Bula. He's, he, yeah, like I said, he has been there. He's been close. He, he's quick. He's got everything he needs, really, to, to win a race. It's just the last bit of luck that he needs to uh, actually uh, achieve it. Same for Eric Augsma, I think, as well. He got his first podium in his home round at Zenford, and he's always very close or in the leading group. He just hasn't managed to uh, you know, keep it together for an entire race, but he definitely has to pace. As we get ready for the restart, Alexi Kovanemi and Jensen Randall, the two Aston Martins, leading in the way. Jensen Randall, I'm sorry, Aleski is your control car. So Aleski, Jensen Randall, Free Abile, and Bourbon are going to be running one, two, three, four. Interestingly, Borbuna already got through, yeah, he has to let through the position because he was already up to P4 before the safety car restart line, but it looks like he is not actually giving it up to Eric Augsma. He goes up the inside, back into La Source there, and he also opens the door for uh, Noah Smith to get through. Maybe that was to let them go back through because I believe he was in sixth place before the safety car restart. As you go up, oh, Ruzan Redion after his restart here with Alexi Kovanemi still leading the way. Let's see how long he can keep his teammate behind him. And Jensen Randall's going to have the slipstream. No DRS as of yet, but he's got a great run coming down the Camel Straight. They go side by side. He's going to pick up the inside line. And Jensen Randall back out in front once again. Yeah, the answer was not very long. Yeah. <laughs> but the back to Venting also, uh, who has uh, gone through on the center duel now down to P8. So also these drivers still very close to each other after the safety car restart. And Nicola Paz Racy, he's going to be keen to make up as many positions as possible here on the restart, being on the medium tires as well, already up to P11. And Noah Smith is working on the backside of the Red Bull of Air, trying to pick up that fourth position. Borbune is back down into sixth. Tim Ventic with a time penalty. He's got Sandro Julius all over the back of him. Vincenzo Torre running in ninth, and Jamie Jägerstrom is getting under threat here from Falzarezzi as Falzarezzi swings around the outside, takes the tenth position away from Jamie Jägerstrom. 
Jensen Randall already a second and a half on Koivi Niemi. So no, no DRS. I mean, we're still a lap away from DRS, but Jensen is really pushing here on the safety car restart. Meanwhile, Miller yes. Smith still working on the back of Eric, trying to see if he can get a run down into the bus stop chicane. He's not going to be close enough to make a move this time by. Oh, and there's almost contact between the two. And Jetson Randall run the fastest lap of the race, a 143.4. Yes. And Yegerstrom is retired. Yes, he dipped oh. into the pits in a uh, very quick retirement as soon as he got to the pits. So not sure what happened for Jägerstrom. Uh, Jägerstrom did not make the corner, unfortunately. That's a very hard left-hander heading into the pits. Yeah. And he probably binned it heading in there too quickly. Meanwhile, Noah Smith and Eric battling for this fourth position. Eric is all over the back of him as we hop on board. Oh, and they almost touch. I'm impressed that Noah Smith kept the position through Kimmel. That's usually a and right behind easy them, They're side by side. That's Tim Ventic and Borbune battling side by side. The Alpine. And now it's a three-car battle. Here yeah. comes Sandro Julius on the outside. <laughs> Tim Ventic just can't can't separate himself from these battles. Sandro's going to get to the inside of Borbune, pick up the seventh position, and now he's going to set his sights on Tim Ventic. Oh, Nicola Fonsé is now the inside. If a pull on there, Borbune losing like three places in about as many corners. Nicola Fonsé is up to P8. Uh, Borbune uh, dropping back a little bit there. He was uh, being picked up there by a couple drivers, and uh, maybe that rattled his cage a little bit. And also, Nicola Fonsé is going to be quick on those mediums to uh, get back through the field. That is a tough restart for Borbune as he start, restarted fourth and is now back to ninth. I do think Nicolo on Puan went a little wide, so I don't know what the track limits uh, warnings are at for him, but I think definitely uh, the outside of Puan, it looked like all four tires over track limits. Meanwhile, Freya oh, Bile has please. caught the back of oh. Aleski. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry to uh, butt in there, but Dulles just dived up the inside into the bust of chicane of uh, Tim Venting. They're now side by side coming up through La Source as they start lap 15. Dulles up the inside. Into oh, look at Ventic try and run the outside. And oh my oh, yeah, gosh! Be four wow. wide. Woo, that's Ventic a lot of cars in outside. a little bit of area. <laughs> so Sandra's going to have the slipstream as they head through Eau Rouge. And DRS is going to be enabled. We got a five car battle for the sixth place. Oh, oh so easy Bowser for Nicolo. A little contact. And Bowser is going to give a shoulder check to Sandra. Sandra's got to cut the corner. Oh, Borbune capitalizes on that straight oh, away. And Sandra almost pushed into the gravel. Vincenzo Torres and somehow finds himself in the middle of all this. <laughs> Vintic also back up into 7th place, dispatches his competitor down to P8, and Dulis all the way back to P10, had to take avoiding maneuvers there into uh, Camel to uh, avoid getting hit by the drivers on his inside. So yeah, great for Nicola Van Schreese, back up into 6th place, also Freya Bile managed to get past on Alexi Kovenemi on the Camel straight as well into 2nd place. And Noah Smith now all over the back of Aleski for the third position. Aleski lost that posi uh, second position to Freeab while we were watching that battle with Sandro. And now he's getting ready to lose another one. Here comes Noah Smith to the outside. Great run out of that corner. And he's going to take the position before they even get to the bus stop chicane. Yeah, it looks like Alexi Kovenem is really fading. Also having those uh, tires that has been on for a bit longer than the drivers around him. So, and he's actually going into the pit lane. So surprisingly, four laps on those mediums has cost him a number of positions. So I didn't think it would be that bad, but that's why I'm an anal uh, a commentator, not a driver. Yeah, it's an interesting strategy from Alexi. I, again, I always appreciate he's willing to take risks. No one else is. But I, I think we saw something very similar in the Hungarian Grand Prix where Alexi stayed out and the tires just fell off quickly. So, so we've got a four-car battle, battle for seventh. Actually, yeah, yeah I guess that would be a yeah. sixth. Yeah, Tim I guess, still part of it as they go up through the camel straight into Lake Home. Three oh, wide. He's going to get split. <laughs> oh, and Sandra's going to dive to the inside at the end of the camel straight. Great move by Sandra to pick that spot back up. Also, oh, Max Molde game through on Dion Style into that same corner into Lake Home. Managed to outbreak Dion Style back up into the points. 
And Tim Bentick has that time penalty hanging over his head as well. So right now he would still finish in the ninth position. I believe it's a, what, a three-second time penalty, right? Uh, three-second time penalty for Tim Ventink. And Borbune trying to find a way around Vincenzo Torre. Yeah, again, Vincenzo kind of quietly up into P6. Through all the battling we've seen among these cars, it's Vincenzo out ahead. And this would be a great result from Vincenzo. Maybe it's one of the best results of the season for him if he can maintain this. Well, Borbune might be looking to make a move as they head down into the bus stop chicane. Vincenzo is going to take the defensive line. He's still biding his time for now. I think he might be waiting for the DRS. Borbune with a very distinctive green helmet in the Alvatari. <laughs> he's uh, nicknamed the Frog as well, so that's why he's got a, a bright green helmet. <laughs> Fortunately, no helmet customization yet. He didn't have one yet, but he's going to have the DRS here as they go up towards Arush and Redium for the 17th time of asking. Let's see if we can make a move on the Mercedes in front of him. He's a little bit further back. He lost a lot of ground coming out of uh, the first corner here. Yeah, I almost wonder if he, he upshifted into Radion. I, I wonder if uh, maybe he lost a little bit of power going into 8th instead of keeping it in 7th like Vincenzo had done. And also a battle for P12. Alexi Kovenemi on those fresh tires. Getting his way through on Noel. Robin Herstagen as well very close. And Dion Stahl still battling it out with Max Mulder for that final point. They are side by side, come up towards the corner where Max Mulder has got the 10 place back on Dion Stahl. I think that's the corner with no name, isn't it? As uh, also Alexi Kovenem, he's very, being able to uh, benefit from that. He's going to be a lot quicker than them on those fresh off tires. He's already alongside Dion Stahl as they head up towards Poole. Yeah, Kovenem on softs. Ooh, this there's fresh. contact almost. Woo. <laughs> oh, Dion's are just about cutting across the nose of Alexi Kovenem. Might be on fast tires, but Dion is not going to make it easy for him. I think it's, we've seen a lot of kind of uh, impatience with the softer compound runners, especially the pacey ones like Koivinyemi and Falzarezi. Coming around Blanchemont here, it's going to be a great overtaking opportunity, but uh, you don't really have that coming out of Pulan. And this four-car battle from the sixth position continues on. Borbune trying to get around and Vincenzo Torre, Sandro trying to get around Borbune, and Tim Ventic trying to get all them spots back because he was a little bit higher up just a few laps ago. Working lap 18 of 22 as they head down into the first quarter. Now you're going to have this four-car battle. Vincenzo is going to be a sitting duck because he's not going to have DRS while the other three cars are going to have it. Meanwhile, a little higher up, I think Noah Smith is about to take P2 from Freyob on Kemmel. Nice and easy. Seven lap old softs for Freyob. I think they're starting to drop off. And no, here comes Borbune on the inside line. of Vicenzo oh, Torre. And Borbune is going to take that position. Sandra's going to try and do a crossover move to try and get that spot, but he's not going to be able to do it. Whoa, and a big wiggle for Tim Vente coming out of that corner. And Dilsau and Max Mulder still also fighting it out. They've been chopping positions quite often uh, over those last couple of laps, still back up into P11. But Alexi Kovemi has found his way through on both of them, so he has now escaped into P10. So this is going to be the battle for P11 for now, as Max Mulder had a bit of a look up the inside there of Dilsau and the Bruxelles, but the side still... Oh, Max Mulder has lost it! He's lost it and he's into the wall, but he still has his car intact. Not a lot of damage, luckily, for Max, but he's lost a couple of places. Meanwhile, Tim Ventic picked up another three-second time penalty. Battling it out for the eighth position with Sandro Dorius. We've got a caution flag flying in sector two. That is Lewis Marshall. Yeah, it looks like he just dropped it on his own. So Lewis Marshall not having a great comeback either. So some of these strong drivers that we've had in years past, uh, certainly not shaking off the rust here at Spa. Sam Brandt bended under caution. See Lewis Marshall's dropped it. By his lonesome. I think that's the second time he's spun. Three second time penalty for Lewis now trying to get back on track. I'm going to check in with Jensen Randall here just so everybody's still aware. Jensen Randall is in this race. He's got six seconds on Noah Smith in P2. So I think nice and easy for the points leader at this point. Although Drew Bailey is still within striking distance of Noah Smith for that second place. Eric Elgismar just dropping off a little bit in P4, number 25. 
Make it a false face. He's being in a bit of an isolated P5 at the moment, but still a fight going on for P6. Borbune being passed on the outside by Vincenzo Torres, side by side into Lake Hall. Oh, and it's here comes Sandro. Sandro is looking to make a move to try and get a two for one deal. A lot of guys have been getting that sale this week, but here comes Tin Ventic on the outside. He's going to go deep into the corner. He's going to lose it. Sandro's going to pick up a spot. Actually, he's going to save his spot. Still running in the eighth position. Still trying to find a way around Vincenzo Torre. Yeah, yeah Borbuna doing well to defend. He actually picks oh, up a time penalty. Oh, he got a, there. picks yeah. up a three-second time penalty. Oh, shit, it's gonna be crucial. That uh, that really that track limit on Puyon has been catching a lot of drivers, especially yeah. these drivers battling. Yeah, and don't be confused. Oh, by and the way. Tim Ventic, another big wiggle coming out of that corner. He's having some issues with those rear tires. Yeah, I saw that there's been a bit of confusion here because we have two number 25s in the race. Actually, Eric Elgsma has got the actual number 25, but Borbune's preferred number is 25 as well. <laughs> he just happened to join as well with Leighton Eric, so he's actually supposed to sport the number 94. As uh, He's also a big Verline fan, is uh, Borbune, but uh, don't tell with the same numbers that Borbune is actually supposed to have. The 95 S Vincenzo Toro loses a bit of traction there and is now under pressure from Sander Dulis on the outside of La Source. I think Dulis will just give him the corner there to wait for the DRS. He actually tries to hang it on the outside. They're going to be side by side coming up to Radeon. Oh, yes. and you can't go side by side through Eau Rouge. It never works. Vincenzo is going to give up the position to Sandro. And I just saw a three second time penalty, I think, for Falzarezzi. Max Mulder picks up a three second time penalty. Here comes Tim Ventic. Vincenzo Torre, they're going to split him like he's lap traffic. And Tim Ventic, Ventic's got that three-second time penalty hanging over his head, so he's essentially really not a part of this battle at this point. There's been so much battling wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact that some of these track limits violations could be appealed and removed. But yeah, for right now, if you're Borbune and you know that's going to stick, you, know, you just want to finish this race. And it looks like he is really pushing to try and separate himself. It's 1.4 seconds now behind him to Vincenzo Torre. So Bruno really trying to uh, to pull the plug here and just escape from the group behind him to try and compensate for the three-second time penalty. Well, interestingly enough, I think Falzarezzi has more than one penalty as well. So he's even would be catching fifth position if he could get in there, possibly cut that time down. He might be able to pick up an extra spot towards the end of this race given the time penalties that are going to be handed out. Yeah, it's definitely going to shake things up for sure at the end of the race. So Jensen Randall has come around the source for the penultimate lap. No Smith comfortably in P2 right now. I think Freya Belay with the softs, a podium finish in the cards for him, but I don't see a position to be gained there. And Vincenzo Torres just picked up a three-second time penalty. He lost the back end coming out of the bus stop chicane. So Sandro, he's the only driver in this battle we got going on that doesn't have a time penalty currently, so he could pick up potentially a couple of spots. And also, Fonz Frazier is slowly catching up to Eric Elgesma in fourth place. Eric on the hard tires, Fonz Frazier on the mediums, both the same age, although I think Fonz Frazier was slightly quicker last time around. And Sandro's going to easily make that pass down the Kemmel straight, and he's going to move into the seventh position. He can now set his sights on Borbune, who again has that three-second time penalty hanging over his head. So that would be another position gain for Sandro Dulius. And Sam yeah. Brandt has officially left the session, even he, though he wrecked quite some time ago. What a race for Vincenzo Torre. I mean, he, he binned it in qualifying. As you remember, he started in the back row, and he finds himself in quite a battle here for, for some very good points. So a great drive for Vincenzo Torre. Yeah, it definitely is. Very solid drive from him. Yeah, Dulis is looking good there in P7 with those two drivers in front of him who has got a uh, time penalty. And uh, Eric Elgesma, he is also just within a second of uh, Freya Bile in P3. Jensen Randall has started the final lap here at Spa. It's been uh, an easy day at the office for him, like it so often is. Jensen ran yeah. a 90 point lead coming into this race over Logan Arand and Logan who is out of the season for the foreseeable future depending on whether he wants to come back or not 
It's been a really good uh, penultimate lap from Eric Augsburg. He's managed to pull away from Nicolas Falsieri again. He's closed up to free Abile. He's going to have to DRS here on the Kebble straight. So Eric Augsburg still in by the shot of the podium. He's going to try to go to the outside here. Yeah, Free it's Abile, easy. Defense inside, and yeah, what an easy through. overtake. And wow, Aleski a... just made a move on Tim Ventic and trying to get around Vincenzo Torre to pick up a couple of spots here at the end of this race. And Free Abile just picked up a three second time penalty. Yeah, so not Lesky sure. he moves into eighth. Not sure where Freyab got that penalty coming around Lacom and into Russell's. It didn't seem like anything stuck out. He wasn't really battling with El Erzma there. Yeah, but that's just basically confirmed El Erzma on the podium. But it's very good pace for him at the end of the race. He's still in the low 56s and he's able to close that gap pretty quickly as Tim Ventic also picks up another three second time penalty. Oh, and Borbune almost lost the back end of the car trying to stick with. Sandro Julius through that downhill left-hander. Well, coming around Blanchemont into the bus stop chicane, it's Jensen Randall and the Aston Martin. Really never under threat. We had a few different race leaders, but Jensen, the last turn underway, he's going to cross start finish. Points leader extending the lead. We'll have a countdown clock for when he gets confirmed championship. We'll go back to Borbune where the action is. And Noah Smith's going to come across the line for the second spot. Eric's going to pick up the third place. Free Abile fourth. Falzarezzi. Falzarezzi makes his way back into fifth after everything that he's been through today. Sandra Julius able to hold off Borbune for the sixth position. And it looks like Alessi's going to pick up an extra spot because of Borbune's time penalty, so he'll be seventh. Vincenzo Torri, ninth. Tim Ventic is tenth. And that is going to be obviously your unofficial results. The swan song for, for Max Mulder as he comes around to the bus stop. He won the 1v1 race at, on the new year. As he <laughs> does a little, we'll call it a he celebratory donut. He doesn't care anymore. They, they yeah, what, are, what are you going to do? You're going to penalize, penalize someone who's not going to race again? I don't think uh, Senna Dulles is going to like this, but uh, Max Mulder gives us a bit of a show here at the end of his SRL. Career. So we <laughs> we last saw these at Silverstone as he won the 1v1 knockout bracket. Max Mulder, <laughs> always fun to watch, always fun to hear. Every week he says, this is the one I'm going to win. So thank you <laughs> to Max Mulder. <laughs> He's really taking his time. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Max Mulder really... Um matured himself nice as an SL driver also over in the other championship we have like you said the 1v1 he of course won that as he defeated me in the final and uh, also uh, in the GT3 series a double GT3 champion uh, Le Mans with four hour winner uh, you know definitely um, a good CV for Max Mulder as he ends his SRO career here at least for the F1 championship in Spa with B14 but Jensen Rendell and who can stop him another victory for the Aston Martin driver and uh, definitely already has one hand on the championship trophy. And so Vincenzo Torre gets the in-game driver of the day. But remember, you guys can go over to the SRL Instagram page and vote for your driver of the day. The link is in the description below. Who would you two have for your driver of the day? Uh, hard to say. Uh... I mean, a lot of people would probably vote for Jensen, but uh, given it's just too easy for him i would probably have to go with noah smith i, I would agree i think eric yeah i, th yeah, I think noah smith had a great eric. race okay <laughs> but i might be slightly biased because i i know eric very well of because you are the red bull driver as well yeah, also yeah of course he is uh, standing in for myself or well you and as well like sam brent because uh, you guys also retired from SRL, unfortunately, so a big change up in the Red Bull team, but we're a very good race from Eric Eggersma, getting his second podium in SRL after he clinched his first one at Zandvoort, so we good to see him back in the top three. So well, unofficial results for today's race, Jensen Randall with the win, Noah Smith second, Eric third, Freya Bile is fourth, Nicolo Falzarezzi fifth, Sandro Doi is sixth, Aleski seventh, Borbune is eighth, Vincenzo Torre ninth, and Tim Bentick rounding out your top ten points paying positions for today's Grand Prix. Well, we had quite a few safety cars today, but what if I told you round 17 next week is at Monza? So, hey, we could probably get through that without any safety cars, you guys think? <laughs> sure, join, never happens. Join us. One turn one. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll sign off here, Not but join sure us for round 17 at Monza next week. Uh, I'm Brian Kessler, and it was a fun three-man booth, gentlemen. 
I'll let you sign off. And I am Kamikaze Fox, a.k.a. Lance. This has been SRL Season 9, F1 2023 on the PlayStation platform. And we will see you guys in the next round.